It's Thursday, February 25th, and this is your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski, bringing you the latest local news, including a look at our front pages this week. Rob Adams joins us with your forecast and a look at local sports, and of course, Donald Ang takes a look back on this day in history. Later in the show, we also have a special interview with a family affected by ALS who are working to raise money to find a cure. But first, taking a look at today's headlines, many towns were left cleaning up the damage following a serious windstorm overnight. In Ridgefield, Monroe, and New Canaan, downed trees and power outages led to schools being closed while other towns had delayed openings. In New Canaan, around 9 this morning, police were reporting about 30 local roads were affected by damage either to trees or wires. The fire chief there was reporting that some of those downed wires were live and dangerous. It was a similar story in towns like Weston, Wilton, and Darien. Easton was also hit hard with peak power outages of 2,200 customers. According to Eversource, over 66,000 Connecticut customers were without power this morning, and we are still following that storm cleanup. In other news, murder suspect Kyle Navin appeared in court on Wednesday and was granted a continuance. Navin's lawyer, Eugene Riccio, asked for the continuance so he can do further investigation on the case. Bridgeport Superior Court Judge Robert Devlin agreed to continue it to March 28th. Navin is charged with murder in the deaths of his parents, Jeffrey and Jeanette Navin of Easton, formerly of Weston. The couple was initially reported missing in August 2015. Their bodies were found in October in a yard at an abandoned home on Norfield Road in Weston. Jeffrey Navin was co-owner of J&J Refuse of Westport. Jeanette Navin was a longtime paraprofessional at Weston Public Schools. Kyle Navin was reportedly upset that he was being cut from his parents' wills. A man wearing blue jeans and a blue jacket and, strangely enough, a Santa Claus hat ran from DEEP police officers near Fire Hill Road in Reading on Tuesday, February 23rd. When called in to help, neither Ridgefield nor Reading police officers could find the individual, though Reading police said they believed they had a tentative ID on the suspect. You can follow more on that story at thereadingpilot.com. A Danbury man is accused of stealing the identity of an elderly Weston man and making fraudulent charges on his bank account of more than $53,000. On February 1st, Weston police arrested 47-year-old Derek Perkins of Danbury after he turned himself in on an outstanding warrant filed on January 20th. Perkins was charged with identity theft, credit card theft, and illegal use of a credit card. Police say Perkins worked as an in-home caretaker for the 84-year-old victim, a Weston resident at the time, from October 2014 through January 2015. Some of Perkins' duties included assisting the victim with daily activities and driving him to run errands. According to Fairfield County Bank statement from February of 2015, there were fraudulent charges of more than $53,000 made from the victim's account, including two loan payments, one on February 3rd and one on February 17th, made in Perkins' name. Fairfield County Bank obtained a fraud affidavit on behalf of the victim, and in March 2015, almost all the money was returned to the victim's account. The fraudulent transactions were charged back to the merchants. In October 2015, Weston police spoke with Perkins. He told police that he had kept the victim's debit card to run errands. He also said he used the victim's card to make two loan payments with the victim's permission. Two days later, Weston police contacted the victim, who now lives at an assisted living home in Reading, and asked if he authorized Perkins to make those payments, to which he responded, definitely not. And in Stratford, classes in Stratford High School are back in session today after the Department of Public Works crews spent much of Wednesday working to restore power to the building. School Superintendent Janet Robinson said early Thursday morning that the school would be open today. Several, other electrical, several older electrical switches in the building were unable to be reset during a power surge that happened late Tuesday, forcing the school to stay closed all day Wednesday. Public Works Director Maurice McCarthy said the building's main disconnect tripped when power was restored after Tuesday's power outage, but it was reset. The problem surfaced further in the system when the older switches were tripped and were unable to be reset. The aging equipment failures brought into focus the planned renovation of the high school. The project is expected to receive final approval at Stratford's Town Council March 14th meeting. 
A group of Democrats and Republicans have forged a bipartisan group of lawmakers working to craft legislation that addresses the needs of firefighters who have contracted cancer related to their duties. Several versions of the legislation have been drafted and are being negotiated with numerous interests, lawmakers said on Friday, February 19th. Representative Dave Rotigliano said the intent of the bill is to provide local firefighters who are diagnosed with certain cancers linked to the dangerous job they do with the necessary support and coverage they deserve. Representative Michelle Cook of Torrington submitted two bills this session to help firefighters who are diagnosed with cancer. One bill would extend workers' compensation coverage for these firefighters, and the other would allow for short-term and long-term disability coverage for firefighters diagnosed with cancer. You can get more information on that at thetroubletimes.com. But now it's time to throw it over to Rob Adams, who's back in studio today to bring us the four Rob. All right. Good morning, Kate. Good morning, everyone. We have a chance of showers afternoon today, a mostly cloudy day with temperatures falling to around 49 by 5 this afternoon. The wind will be out of the southwest from 11 to 13 miles per hour, gust as high as 28, and we will have a 40 percent chance of precipitation tonight. Slight chance of showers before 9. Otherwise, mostly cloudy and a low around 30 with wind chill values hovering between 25 and 30. The wind might gust as high as 23 and perhaps nothing like we saw last night. Quite a performance. Sunny for Friday. Steady temperature sits around 33. Wind chill values between 20 and 25. Wind a little more of an issue. Out of the northwest, 10 to 18, gusts as high as 30. Friday night will drop down to 17 under mostly clear skies. Mostly sunny for Saturday and a high near 37. And we will see not an inch of that sunlight among the HAN network crew as we will all be inside Terry Connors' rink pretty much until next Saturday. I kid, but it's going to be a long day of hockey and a lot of fun. Partly cloudy for Saturday night. We'll sit right around 34. Sunny and 48 for Sunday. Sunny and 52 for Monday. I try to bring you the good news. The weather, temperatures right now, Milford 51, Ridgefield at 50, and right here in Shelton, 52 degrees, Kate. All right, thanks so much, Rob. Well, we're going to take a break when we come back. Rob has the latest in local sports. Donald Dang takes a look back on this day in history, and we have a lot more coming up after this. Had a sports injury that needs immediate care? Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care gives you direct access to an orthopedic specialist quickly. Their highly trained orthopedic professionals expertly treat you without an appointment. Skiing, snowboard, or sports accident, sprain or fracture, Coastal Ortho Express can help. Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care open Monday through Saturday in the I Park building at 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk. Call 203-845-2070 or CoastalOrthoExpress.com. Find them on Facebook at Coastal Ortho CT. Darien Sport Shop is a unique store because it's a family store. A busy mom can come in with kids in tow and find everything she needs for them and even find a dress for herself for Saturday night. And if she's in a rush, she can simply go home and order it from us that night. We'll deliver it the next day. The Darien Sport Shop. We're pretty on the outside and amazing on the inside. Conveniently located with free and easy parking at 1127 Post Road, Darien, Connecticut. Or shop us online at dariensport.com. It's the new year. The to-do list is long and it's easy to feel pulled in many directions at once. Your professional personal shoppers at Walter Stewart's are ready to check groceries off your list by shopping for you. Save extra time this year and spend it doing more important things. Great food and wine delivered to your home with the same day service. Shop Stewart's online at stewartsmarket.com. When it comes to local entertainment, we've got it all. From movies, local artists, etiquette, and more. Watch HAN Arts and Leisure every Thursday at 2 on the HAN Network. Hi, I'm Rob Adams with my good friend Donald Eng, and we're the home team for Nutmeg Sports Monday through Wednesday at 2 o'clock right here on the HAN Network. We are the place for all things Connecticut sports, so come hang out with us on Nutmeg Sports. Don? Don't call him the best color man in the game for nothing. Nutmeg Sports, 2 o'clock, Monday through Wednesday, right here on the HAN Network. The 2016 FCAC playoffs are coming to the HAN Network. We'll have all of the big games beginning February 23rd on the court and on the ice. And we'll have it all live and streaming HD. This is your home for the 2016 FCAC Winter Championships. 
the HAN Network. And we're back on this Thursday, February 25th edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinsky. It's time to take a look back on this day in history with Donald Eng. Don. Well, Kate, on this date, a death penalty handed down in Texas. That in itself is not unusual. What is unusual is that the recipient still suffering decades later. But first we go to 1901. J.P. Morgan incorporates the United States Steel Corporation. The company would become one of the largest in the world and it was an early adopter of product placement. In 1960, uh, the company created the Steel Mark, the three four-sided star-like figures inside a circle to promote steel to the public. Two years later, Republic Steel of Cleveland successfully lobbied a certain football team to adopt it as their logo. To 1919, Oregon places a one cent per gallon tax on gasoline, becoming the first U.S. state to levy a gas tax. It proves so popular that every other state has since adopted it. Pennsylvania currently tops the list, charging motorists 50 cents a gallon. Alaska and New Jersey are the lowest at 12 and 14 cents, respectively. Thank you, Oregon. 1932, Adolf Hitler becomes a German citizen by naturalization, which allows him to run in the 1932 election for the Reich's president. Hitler would lose that election by 6 million votes to World War I hero Paul von Hindenburg, but would assume the office when Hindenburg died two years later. And finally, now we go to 1987, Dallas, Texas, for this. The joint investigation between SMU and the NCAA has concluded that between September of 1985 and December of 1986, monthly payments ranging from $50 to $725 were made to numerous student-athletes. According to SMU's investigator in this case, those payments were made by one booster, who neither the university nor the NCAA will name publicly. The report states that certain key athletics department staff members agreed to the illegal payoff. That is Southern Methodist University, the football program, the only NCAA college football program ever to receive the death penalty after it was revealed that athletic officials and school administrators knew that a booster was making illegal cash payments to school football players, including future NFL Hall of Famer Eric Dickerson. SMU resumed football in 1989, but has had only five winning seasons since. No other football program has ever received the death penalty, though Penn State came close in the aftermath of the Jerry Sandusky scandal. That is your look back in history, and I am Donald Ng. All right, thanks so much, Don. Well, getting back to a little more news today, New Canaan High School Athletic Director Jay Egan told the town council Wednesday night that he now favors replacing the Dunning Stadium artificial surface field with a cork infill material. Two weeks ago, he pitched the same project to replace the field surface to the Board of Finance, but at that time, he explained that the infill surface between the plastic blades of grass would be rubber. Since his presentation to the Finance Board, a letter from Greens Farms Academy in Westport ran in the New Canaan Advertiser urging all schools to use cork in their artificial surface surfaces rather than rubber. There has been speculation that rubber can be hazardous to one's health. Egan said he finds the reports of health hazards to be anecdotal only and not supported by statistics. However, after explaining that he now favors cork instead of rubber, he told the Advertiser that he thinks it will comfort people. The project to replace the surface of Dunning Field is expected to cost between $400,000 and $500,000, regardless of the material. The funds are to be raised 100% through private donations and not taxpayer dollars. But now we're going to throw it over to Rob Adams for the latest in local sports. Rob. All right, Kate. Good morning once again, everyone. We'll start with girls ice hockey as the FCAC championship is all set. Probably going to come as no surprise. In game one of last night's semifinal doubleheader, the New Canaan Rams ran away from the Ridgefield Tigers as we take a look at the highlights. Into the right corner it goes. Brooke Dean back there for the Rams. Trying to throw it on from the sharp angle and they score! They scrum for it back there. Now I see, was that actually Carol? I don't know that it was 12. It doesn't matter, they've scored. 2-0 Rams. Just as the puck goes through to crease. Great timing, Rob. <laughs> timing is everything. <laughs> so away we go, and they score off a backhander. You can't do that any better than the Rams just did. Brooke Dean makes it 3-0. Clear it. Who the winner here has a date with? We'll find out in game number two. 
And right now, it might be New Canaan for nothing. So there you have it, as Brooke Dean scored twice, Catherine Granito, Mia Carroll, and Gianna Bruno added single tallies, and the Rams advance with a 5-0 win. Freshman goalie Amanda Hill made 12 saves for the shutout. Michaela Gleason stopped 38 in the loss. So who will the Rams play? I mean, I'm, I was going to make it dramatic. I was going to find ways to make it a joke. There's really nothing more to say. You can probably guess it's Darianne, of course. The Blue Wave dominated Stanford West Hill Staples in the nightcap. Here are the highlights. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Darien Ice Rink for tonight's second FCAC semifinal. Kirby will step across the line into the left circle. Gets down on net. Travels down on net and scores. A wonderful effort by Chandler Kirby, and it's a 1-0 game. On the first period, sends it back out to center and across the line and nearly alone. And here goes Cassidy, and she does it again. And Rob, I'm not sure what was better, the pass from Kirby or the finish by Cassidy. Bevel with a goal, just inside the line. They work it down to the bottom of the circle. Now into the left circle, top shelf, and Marissa Baker makes it a nickel, 5-0. And here comes the blue wave. They leave it at the top of the right circle. That was Cassidy's shift. They work it right back to the high slot. A little nudge over to the left point. Bringing it back to the top of the right circle. Through traffic and they score! You could almost see that coming. Georgia Baker, or excuse me, Georgia Cassidy had a hat trick to lead the wave past SWS 8-0. Chandler Kirby and Corinne Bevel scored twice. Marissa Baker added a single goal. Darian outshot their opponents. Get this, 68 to nothing. Emily Giannunzio pitched a shutout in more ways than one. So the top two seeds will meet at 12.50 on Saturday at Terry Connors Rink in Stanford. We will have the call of Darianna New Canaan right here on the HAN Network. Let's switch gears over to girls basketball. Fairfield Ward won the game of the night, knocking off Ridgefield 51-49. Layla Markovic had 16 for the Mustangs. Earlier in the evening, Camille Martinez had 25 to lead Stamford as they advanced to the title game for the first time with a 63-47 knockout of Trumbull. The Black Knights and Mustangs will meet tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. We'll have it right here on the HAN Network. Going to be a fun one out at Fairfield Ludlow High School. We move on now to the boys' basketball scoreboard, and final night of the regular season reveals this. Danbury over Staples. Trumbull by 11 over, uh, over Darien. Ludlow takes care of McMahon. That's big for Ludlow. Wilton over Norwalk. It was Ridgefield over Stanford, 43-38. That's a big score as well. Greenwich, a 13-point win over New Canaan. West Hill knocked off Central, and Trinity Catholic in overtime beats St. Joseph. So what's that mean for the playoffs? There they are. Stanford and West Hill will get things started, along with Trumbull and Ridgefield. The 4-5 game is Ward and Wilton, and Danbury, the 1-8 matchup against Ludlow. They'll move on to the semifinals and the championships, which we will have for you on the HAN Network. The first round, the quarterfinals, will be at Fairfield Ludlow on Saturday. They will move the games then for the semis over to Ward, and the final will be at Ward as well. And again, we'll have all of it for you right here on the HAN Network. We look now at the boys' ice hockey playoffs for the balance of Saturday. And, of course, the girls, the early game we know is the championship at 12.50, but these are the boys' hockey playdowns, the quarterfinals, with the top two teams getting a bye. Ridgefield and New Canaan will play at 3, and Fairfield and St. Joseph at 5 o'clock. And, again, all of that on the HAN Network. One more note for you. With several schools closed due to power outages and blocked roads from last night's storm, the FCAC Swim Championship at Greenwich High School has been moved to Friday. That meet will begin at 6.30. Originally an open date on the postseason schedule, Friday now will of course feature the swim finals at Greenwich and the girls basketball final, which we told you about, between Ward and Stamford at 7 at Ludlow High School. As for the schedule, we all have the night off. There's nothing going on, so everybody enjoy the evening. But let's flash back to last night as we finish up sports. We had a wonderful conversation back at the Darien Ice Rink with Claire Craven, who came on and talked about some special stuff going on and stuff that, well, at least personally, I'm proud to support. Let's take a look at that right now from last night here on the HAN Network. 
Welcome back to the Darien Ice Rink. I'm Rob Adams. After two, a very impressive performance by the Darien Blue Wave. They lead 6-0 here in this FCAC semifinal. But we are very happy to be joined by Claire Craven, who is going to tell us all about FCAC hashtag Ice ALS. And icing ALS is something I think we would all like to see. You know, the original, the origin of it all is Lou Gehrig's disease, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Lou Gehrig, of course, 1939 makes his famous speech at Yankee Stadium. And, and Claire, it has become known as Lou Gehrig's disease, but it's almost kind of moved back into being known as ALS once again. And regardless of whatever you want to call it, this is a very worthwhile uh, campaign going on here tonight for a, and a very good charity. Tell me how this all came to be. Well, it began actually last year. My son played hockey as a senior, and his coach approached our family knowing that our husband was diagnosed, well, not our, my husband, right. uh, was diagnosed with ALS and asked what he could do and said so many people had approached him on how the community, community could support us. One of the things that we talked about was that ALS is not an incurable disease, but it definitely is an underfunded one. So we decided to team up with our rival Ridgefield and we had a huge uh, hockey game and raised a ton of money for ALS research. And it was so well received and the kids had so much fun that the FCAC actually approached us this year about taking that same idea and spreading it to all of the schools. So this year we have 15 schools 20 different teams, both boys and girls ice hockey, and we had 21 games in the month of January where all of these players had bake sales and, you know, chuck -a pucks like we're doing tonight and 50-50s and just really went out of their way to help raise funds for ALS. It was fantastic. And you set a goal, as we talked about, because we had you on the first game as well, but you set a goal, you're trying to attain that goal, and you know, you're tr all the schools are trying to contribute, and even there, the, not a competition, but they're certainly keeping track of what schools are raising, you know, certain amounts of money. Absolutely, and you know what, this is ice hockey. It's always about competition. <laughs> so there's competition on the ice and competition off the ice, and good natured, you know. The one thing I love about ice hockey is no matter how tough it is on the ice, you shake hands and you move on when you get off. And uh, that was kind of our philosophy. So the players have all joined together. And trust me, they know exactly who is where in the pecking order. So if you go actually to our website, which is als.net slash ice, I-C-E-A-L-S, you can actually see a banner on the right-hand side. And each of the 15 schools is listed. You can see who's in first and who's in second and, and who needs some help. And so we just encourage everyone to log on donate five dollars or five thousand dollars every penny helps i will give away a little secret though if you go look at that website you will see which team is in the lead <laughs> and this very cool sweater that you're wearing you and i talked about it at one point uh during a break in the action here tonight these very cool jersey sweaters as we call them in hockey the very cool what you're wearing they are you know what uh brett amro last season actually uh, produced, you know, purchased a whole whole uh, set of jerseys, and these are our ALS jerseys. So no matter which team is playing for Wilton, the boys or the girls, they get to wear the jerseys. And mine happens to have a 21 because that was my son's uh, number who played last year. But it's fantastic, and there were so many people that that really helped out. You know, one of the the uh, the people that really was fantastic was Blue Line Sports, and uh, Jamie Tropsa and his entire team donated all of the helmet stickers not only for our players last year but for all 500 players who played this year so it was just a fantastic effort and just such a glimpse into what hockey is about and and the sense of family that you have and how when one of yours is down everyone piles in and wants to help how about your your husband what can you tell us about him and and you know just tell us about him you know what i'm blessed he is doing really well uh, my husband has a very slower uh, version. Most people, unfortunately, are gone within two years, about 50% pass within two years. And then certainly within 10 years, um, it's about the longevity of, of the disease. But he is doing well. He actually uh, started with his uh, symptoms in his hands and his throat. So uh, like most people who are diagnosed, 90% are sporadic. They don't understand why. And like 
uh, most of them. We were confused and didn't really understand why, but pretty soon a visit to a, a doctor let us know what's going on. So, you know, he's doing great. He still walks and still has, has uh, mobility. He is retired now and trying to enjoy some time with his kids. We have two daughters that are seniors this year and captains of, uh, of their high, high school hockey team and uh, and then of course our son is at Holy Cross playing club hockey but we uh, we are doing well as a family thank you for asking well you give our uh, best to Eric as well and to your daughters and your son and thank you because you've been such a trooper to come up here so many times tonight to speak with us and let's stay in touch you know we've got nutmeg sports here on the HAN network let's keep getting the word out and keep doing what we can to get rid of ALS Thank you. We sure appreciate anyone and everyone's support. You know, it's a wonderful opportunity to come together to a great cause and a great charity. Well, Claire, thank you so much. We look forward to speaking with you again and enjoy the third period of this hockey game. Thank you. We will. All right. We get ready to take a break here from the Darien Ice Rink. 6 nothing after 2. Darien on their way to the FCAC Championship game where they'll meet New Canaan. We'll get the third period going in a little bit right here. You're watching the FCAC on the HAN Network. All right, great interview with Rob, but we're going to step out now for a break. When we come back, John Kovach joins me, and we're going to take a look at the front pages of our HAN Network papers today. Coming up. I really wanted something that felt like a home. Coming from a big house, I wanted the feel of a home as opposed to a condo. The construction is incredible, whether it's the floors, the fireplace, the moldings, the lighting. It's as peaceful as my home was in the middle of the woods. It feels like a house. It does not feel like a condo or a townhome. I feel like I'm in my house. Find over a thousand special stories at Hospital for Special Surgery. Go to hss.edu slash back in the game. I was jogging five months after my cartilage tear. Skiing a year after hip surgery. And playing grandma four weeks after hip replacement. One special hospital, a thousand special stories. See Connecticut patients at hss.edu slash ct. Here at The Organic Yard, we use bio-nutritional products in our lawn care programs, which reduces the need for fertilizers, nitrates, phosphates, and pesticides up to 80%, making a safer environment for your family and pets. With our organic lawn treatment, you'll receive vigorous, healthy plants with improved root development and better drought resistance. Enroll now in our 2016 Organic Yard program and get a free organic deer tick treatment. Call us today at 914-764-5491 or go to our website at millerslandscapinginc.com. I'm John Kovac. I'm a newspaper editor. I'm a high school football coach. I'm a television presenter. And I want you to love fishing as much as I do. Tune in to Yankee Fisherman Thursdays at 1 on the HAN Network. It's like going to the tackle shop without leaving your office. And we're back on your coffee break. And since it's Thursday, of course, John Kovach, our editorial director, joins me to take a look at our front pages this week. John, welcome. Hello, Hello Kate. Hello, John. Well, what <laughs> paper are you looking at first today? I am looking at the Darien Times, and I've, I had the privilege of uh, reading this story yesterday. And it is a heroin story. Susan Schultz, editor of the Times, did an interview with a Darien resident who has struggled with a heroin wow. addiction, who traces his descent, his climbing out of it. It's really a very interesting story, and it's a cautionary tale in which he personally tells people, do not do this. And it's a problem we've seen in so many of our towns, mm -hmm. uh, so many places in the region that there was actually a session at the New England Newspaper and Press Association conference about covering the opioid crisis. Yes. And we're going to be coming across this again as we go through the front pages. What are you 
looking at? Well, I am looking at the front page of the Ridgefield Press. No surprise, we're seeing this everywhere, but burglaries spiked three times higher uh, in the past year in Ridgefield. Uh, I think that's something we're seeing everywhere now, especially lately in the last few weeks. A lot of, uh, you know, larcenies from unlocked motor vehicles and such, some house break-ins. Uh, also looking, the Ridgeberry cell tower awaiting more carriers. That's a big deal that that cell tower was put up. It took a long time to get it and uh, a long time to get it going online. And the cell service in Ridgeberry has been terrible for quite a while. So good news there, though. Taking a look at things in Stratford, they are optimistic that there will be renovation for Stratford High. That is a very handsome and very historic building that definitely needs work. And if there's any question on that, it can be seen in the story you just did about it being closed yes. Wednesday due to a power outage and problems subsequent to the electricity being turned back on. There's a new system in place with Stratford Police where you can report an incident without an officer. If it's an incident where you don't need an officer, I think that's a very good that idea. That is a great idea, yeah. And uh, a new director named at the Stratford Library. Looks a little similar to someone we know that last name there. Just a bit. I had to do a <laughs> double take. But All that's right. uh, Sherry Szymanski who uh, <laughs> has been an assistant director there for some time. All right, taking a look at the front page of the Shelton Herald, uh, you were just talking about the Darien Times, that story Susan did, and a lead story in Shelton is heroin use on the rise. They had two deaths in the valley and two overdoses that were not fatal in Shelton, and they would actually made an arrest. They'd launched an investigation and arrested the drug dealer, the alleged drug dealer in that case, and I know uh, Shelton officials are also planning to have, you know, a community forum, which we're seeing a lot of. Uh, two men charged in an armed home invasion, and an interesting feature story that Aaron did. You know, I've often wondered about this place still being open in downtown Shelton. Video 7, uh, a video store, and Aaron Berkowitz did uh, a feature on the Neighborhood Movie Store, which is, of course, one of the last of its kind. And uh, it's interesting kind of reading how things have changed over the years for a business. Uh, not that we know anything about that. But <laughs> not at all. <laughs> and then a nice photo of a residence uh, getting ready for spring weather, some golfing. We've had good weather for it lately. Anybody miss having to rewind before taking the tape no, back. No, be kind, rewind, I know, exactly. it's crazy. Monroe Courier uh, has a story that a number of our papers have on page one, and that is the lawsuit by families of children and adults killed in the Sandy Hook school massacre trying to have gun makers be held criminally liable for that incident. It'll be about two months before there is a decision whether that suit can go forward. Mm. I'm taking a look at the front page of the Milford Mirror. A uh, nice big feature on the city naming their St. Patrick's Day Parade dignitaries. That's always a big deal. Milford, Milford does a great St. Patrick's Day they Parade. Do. This year it's going to be on March 12th and it goes through downtown Milford. As well as a story we talked about coffee on coffee break, which is a plea or trial expected at the next Christopher Plaskin hearing, which is going to be March 7th. He is accused of uh, murdering his classmate at, at the high school. So. Very serious story there that Jill's been following. You just really would love to see some closure in that at some point in the very near future. In Weston, selectmen are asking the Board of Education to share the cost of a school resource officer. Those are police assigned to the schools. People say there are great benefits to it, particularly to the relationship forged between young people and police at a very impressionable time in their lives, mm -hmm. but the cost of it always causes debates. We had pipes burst at the fire station in Weston, and on the good news side, Weston students from Weston High School won the Teen Safe Driving Video Contest oh, cool. that was sponsored by the State we'll Department have to of get Motor that Vehicles. On coffee break, that yeah, video, definitely. Yeah. I want to see that. Yeah, well, uh, taking a look at the Easton Courier, uh, first selectman Adam Dunsby announced that he is filing paperwork uh, to run for a state representative seat representing the 135th district. So interesting story there. And then a very cool feature. Uh, about a college live-in program at Easton EMS. Uh, a pre-med student, as an example from Sacred Heart University, is actually a live-in emergency uh, medical technician with the EMS Oh, that's there. very cool. Very cool program. That's, I want to read that. That's yeah. a very interesting story. A cut of $3 million by the Board of Finance in New Canaan leads to New Canaan Advertiser. And a discussion there, keeping with the addiction theme that we've been on, 
a panel is going to meet March 31st to talk about strategies for healthy teens and how to avoid addiction and the stigmas and how to live substance free. Yes. All right, we'll take a look at the Reading pilot. Of course, last Friday, some oil spilling into the Norwalk River, which is not good, of course, I'm sure, for the wildlife there. It's not a good, I know a number not of people watching this story very closely. Yes, uh, as well as a uh, an interesting feature on a Reading woman who is collecting suits for soldiers, leading the charge for unemployed ah. veterans. So, great story there. The lead story in Wilton is one that we're going to see more and more in the coming weeks because there has been a lot more in terms of questioning and rallying against these crumb rubber playing fields where it's pulverized recycled tires. There is an organic option now and they are proposing that for Fujitani Field in Wilton. That'll be very interesting. There's a lot of concern that the crushed rubber has carcinogens. Mm. Some who support the use of the field say, well, it's not proven yet. I think it's a wise idea to get ahead of the curve. I've seen solutions where they encapsulate the rubber, and I've seen now organic where it's, a, I believe, a cork-type material. Right. So that it's going to be very interesting to see the next generation of those fields. Yeah, I have a lot of corks they might be able to use for that. <laughs> Just kidding. I wonder where they get. Well, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway. I'm supposed to follow that. <laughs> Taking a look at the Trumbull Times. The Trumbull Times this week, great photo by Lisa Romanchik of some Trumbull residents enjoying, enjoying Twin Brooks Park on Sunday in that beautiful spring-like weather we had. Uh, and an interesting story, a playground breakdown. $2.5 million trimmed from a capital budget that would have gone to pay for a new playground at Indian Ledge Park. And an interesting audit uh, reviewing the senior center policy shows fewer than one person per day uses their transportation service. Wow. S very surprising. Yeah, very, very, very surprising. Very, very surprising. Great photo uh, leading the Lewisboro Ledger of a falconer, and that is at the Wolf Conservation Center. A uh, story on Vista residents seeking help with high water bills. And two years after an electrical fire damaged a Golden Bridge firehouse, hmm. the department has finally reached an agreement with its insurance company. Wow. All right, well, John, what's coming up on Yankee Fisherman today at 1 o'clock? We are going to talk about trout fishing early season in the Massachusetts and the Northeast, and we're going to get ready for bass fishing to heat up, including a talk with a young man who is going to make a splash on the national bass fishing tour. He's already won some events, and, and just a, in the time that I spent with him Sunday, remarkable how mature and, and measured his answer and how he carries himself really it's somebody i want to see him succeed because he just was such a great kid to meet very cool so that's coming up at one two o'clock ha and arts and leisure they're going to be focusing on the oscars going to be very exciting and awards special and i believe we have a special guest on there as well so we should have a red carpet show before i that. know we got to figure it out who are you wearing john <laughs> Anyway, that's going to do it for today's coffee break. We will, of course, be back tomorrow at 11. Have a great Thursday.